Yo, what's up? I'm Martha from Galena Cube. In one of our previous live streams, we got a question regarding sensitive data and how can you manage that in the best way? Of course, you could use the more traditional ways to do this with access control management, like row level security, column level security, or data masking, but that requires you to be on each specific item. But is there a way to have like more of an ecosystem overview where you can get some help to understand where your sensitive data is? Yes, it is called DLP, Data Loss Prevention. That's what I want to talk to you about today. And you know what? Enough of all this talking. Let's head over to my laptop. So data loss prevention starts inside of Purview. So this is where you actually set this up. And if we look at solutions and go to explore all, you're going to see the overview here. And if we just scroll down a little bit to data security, you're going to see data loss prevention as one of the solutions. So we're going to open this one up. Now, what I want us to do is to create an actual policy in order to define what do we want to monitor, any actions we want to put on that and so on. So let's click create policy. Now, if you want to create a DLP policy for something else than Fabric and Power BI, you could take advantage of some of these templates. But with Power BI and Fabric, we have to create one with the custom template. So let's do that. Click next. Now let's give it a great name. Let's just create one that's gonna check out all the most sensitive data. And of course you should give it a really good description. Now you could also have assigned admin units. Now this is not supported for Fabric and Power BI yet. So we're just gonna click next here as well and say that we want full directory. And now we're gonna choose the location the policy should be enforced on. Now you see here that we have a bunch of different things, but for us, we want to manage Fabric and Power BI workspaces, of course. So let's choose that and click next. And then let's create advanced data loss prevention rules. So when I go in here, we can now create some rules. Let's give this rule a name. Let's call it also highly confidential data. Now we can also add a condition. So we're going to say that if the content contains something, let's say that we want to check out if there is any sensitivity labels. So the one that I want to monitor is the highly confidential items that got that label. So I'm going to choose that. I also want to add another content that I want to check. So let's say that it could be an and or, so I'm going to say or, so either it contains highly confidential labels or I will also want to check out the sensitive info types. And here you see that we have 326 items that you could check out. There's a bunch of different built-in classifications that you can essentially search for and manage. Let's look for US passports like that. And then you can also say something about the confidence. So it has to be really high on the confidence that these are actually passport numbers. And also how many passport numbers are you supposed to find to trigger this? So I'm going to say that it could be between one to any. And now I could add some actions as well. So I could restrict access or encrypt the content in Microsoft 365 location. Now you could decide if we want to block everyone. So if this is actually the case for this data, no one can see this by default, or we can block only people outside our organization. So I think I'm going to choose that one. And we can also set up some user notification if we want to. And I think this is a really cool feature because we can then notify people directly wherever the data lies so that when they are going to that item, they're going to get a policy tip. So you're now using data that is labeled as highly confidential. Always apply the principle of least privilege. Only access, share or store data if it's absolutely necessary for your role. So give it a tip that makes sense for you. Now you can also enable overrides, which means that maybe there was a mistake. Maybe the scan didn't perform that well, or there was a good business justification to override this, then you could enable this or they can report it as a false positive. And then that's also going to be overwritten by default. Now the next thing is to set up some settings on incident reports. If this DLP rule discovers something, is that a low, median or high severity level? Let's say that it's high if this happens. We can also add that someone is going to get an email. That should probably be me. And you can also specify this. So don't send me an email for every rule, but send me an email if there are more than one matched activity and so on. But I'm going to get an email for every rule, I think. Okay, I'm quite happy with my DLP rule now. So just let's click save. Amazing. And here you actually see a bit of a summary. So what you can do is to actually run the policy in simulation mode. So that means that we're not actually enforcing any actions, but we are checking how the policy performs. And you can also decide to show policy tips while in simulation mode or not. And you can also say that let's turn it on within 15 days. So that will be the end of the simulation if I want to. Or you can obviously turn it off immediately or leave it off for now and come back later to decide what you want to do. So let's run this in simulation mode and click next. And you can look at the overview here and see that oh, this is perfect, exactly what I need. So let's submit this rule. 
Perfect, now we have a DLP policy rule created. Now let's test it out. I'm gonna open up my Power BI report on some city bike data. And what you can do is that you can set a sensitivity label here. So this is now in general use, but I want to put this in highly confidential. And then I want to publish this. So let's go into Power BI and check it out. So now this is the actual report that I put in and you see here that it got this policy information thing here. So it says the organization found policy issues in the semantic model that need your attention. I can look on the C full details and I actually see the policy tip that I created. I can decide to report an override or just override this if I don't agree. So I think I'm just gonna report and override it. So now the policy tip won't appear on the semantic model anymore because I'm telling them that this semantic model doesn't need that high of a sensitivity label. All right, but what else can we do? So let's open up another report here. Do you see that I have emails and passport numbers? Okay, that's what we put into the DLP rule. And the sensitivity label on this is just general use. I pulled in this data and I've created this beautiful report and now I'm ready to publish it. So let's publish this to our workspace. So let's go into Power BI again and check what this looks like. And here you see the HR semantic model. So this was the report I just published. We see here as well that there's a policy tip. Let's take a look at that, see full details. And here you see that, okay. So it actually was able to find passport numbers. It's telling me that, oof, you should be aware of this. Now, from an admin perspective, it would be nice to see the overview of all of these policy detections. Then you have to go into purview again. So let's check that out. Now, if I click on the policy rule that we created, you see here that actually we have a simulation in progress and we have one match found. So we can now view the simulation. So we have one match on Power BI. All right. And the matching item is the HR report. And I was the one that triggered that match. And then you can dive in, edit the policy if you see that it's not performing the way you want it to, check out items for review. So for us, that would obviously be the HR report. And then you can tune the policy itself or set up proper actions to manage this better. Now for Fabric and Power BI, the support of data loss prevention is quite new. So not everything here is supported, but you have support on semantic models, lake houses, KQL databases, and also mirrored databases. But what do you think? Was this cool? Is this something you can take advantage of? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, remember to check out the other awesome videos from Adam, Patrick, and myself. There's probably one hovering above my head right now, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye!